and gentlemen, and welcome to sunny Austin, Texas. I'm sitting here with my esteemed colleague, Brian Hall, and we're going to talk about some crucial components of the oil and gas pipeline being the downstream area. So Brian talked a little bit earlier about midstream as what some of the key essential areas that we look for from an opportunity standpoint is in our industry. And I'm going to have Brian to elaborate a little bit with me on some compelling information about one of our major businesses, which is downstream. So just for the individuals who are still a little bit puzzled about this dynamic oil and gas industry, I'm going to just talk a little bit about downstream, okay? Just to kind of bridge that gap. Great, Fair business. Enough, Great business to talk about. Yes, sir. Okay, so downstream sector commonly refers to the refining of petroleum and crude oil and the processing of purifying that natural, purifying of uh, raw natural gas, mm -hmm. as well as marketing and what, Brian, distribution, which you have a lot of experience with. Distribution is a big part of it, yes, yes, yes. Uh, of these products that's derived from crude oil and, national, and, and natural gas. So, as stated before by uh, my colleague, Brian Hall, to be a part of downstream, refining is a stage where the crude oil is processed and refined into more useful products. Mm -hmm like petroleum, like gasoline, like diesel fuel, mm -hmm. asphalt, heating oil, kerosene, and what more and more are becoming familiar with, which is the liquef liquefied petroleum gas. Mm -hmm. So there's a few uh, key stats that are very, very critical to, I think, the common marketplace as to the degree of how significant this is to our, our pipeline. So one of the common themes uh, of the industry is the fact that it's paramount that in order to operate in this space, the most important thing in the world to us is HSSE and safety. That's correct. That's so Brian, correct. I know you do a great job as I've seen you get so engaged with these suppliers. You want to talk a little bit about why safety is important to us? Well, clearly, yes, by all means. Um, the thing about downstream, as uh, and it's similar to the, my earlier conversation around midstream, um, this is a this is where a lot of people are involved. This is probably a really one of the more dense areas of a major energy integrated company. Uh, that that you have people working in refineries, you have them working in some of these uh, processing plants or chemical plants. Um, you have them working in the end using space, such as retail. Um, and, uh, and so whenever you have more people in the process, then that means health, safety, security, and environment become critical. Absolutely. And one thing I'll share with you, Donovan, that I just thought of, and that, that is, is that, you know, this downstream part, when you think about the upstream that Deborah's talked about earlier, and you think about the midstream part, the upstream of finding the energy, the midstream of moving the product to, a, to, a, to its next stage, the downstream part is what's really keeping that whole pipeline running. Absolutely. So when you think about if there's a terminal or if there's a refinery that has an issue because of some safety issue, then it shuts down that oh, wow. and backs up that whole process. Wow which not only could cause damage to the community, to the environment, to the people, but also to the company's bottom line. So, awesome. so it is important to be secure, to be safe, to be, awesome. keep your employees healthy, and, and, and really pay a close attention to the environment. So awesome. it, is, it is really critical uh, a part of this. And, 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 uh, and so, it's, it's, as our notes say here, it's uh, having industry experience, having people that know how and that can learn how to really uh, uh, do this efficiently, cause these things to happen, happen efficiently, having suppliers that can do it innovatively yes. um, and without interruption are really critical to our whole performance. So Brian, with that being said, um, you see that we're probably uh, in, a, in a convention center filled with what, more than three or 4,000? Yeah, maybe? Yes, yes I So every five minutes I've looked at you a few times you are getting almost bombarded by WBEs, women business owners, small business owners who are just wanting to find out what are the opportunities that exist in this pipeline. So with, with the conversation being focused on downstream, what are some of the key opportunities that, that, that you feel are prevalent in the organization right now? Well, and so these are, Donovan, I'll, I'll talk to this on maybe two levels. One right. is that 
this is a continuous business. So you've got you know, refineries and terminals that are operating sometimes 24 hours a day, and in most cases, 24 hours a day. So that means that we're always needing products and services to, to do that work. Um, but then there's some where we go, well, what's the next refinery going to look like? What's the next new build going to look like? What's the next uh, chemical plant going to look like? And so when I think about some of the services and products, it's not about just trying to compete to get the business that's already there. It's really meeting us where we're going to need you in five or 10 years or 20 years down the road. But with that said, uh, you've got engineering services, yes. which are you know the run and maintain. Earlier today, we had CH2M Hill on, oh, wow. and there that's one of the major prime major. suppliers of ours. And they were really talking about, as a major supplier of shells, what are they looking for? Awesome. And and the category was run and maintain, awesome. helping you guys run and maintain efficiently uh, your facilities. So you've got that. Then you talk about how do you get that product that is refined or further developed in a chemical plant or a refinery. Uh, you need rail cars, yes. um, you need trucks, uh, you need right. pipelines, you need vessels, uh, tanks, tankers. Um, and so we need suppliers today that really can help manage and maintain this, I can say this, uh, antiquated rail car, rail system that's in America, and but yet we're still using them Absolutely. because we have to. So how do we get suppliers that can help manage that kind of space for us? Um, you have to keep those facilities clean from a health standpoint and a safety standpoint. So we need folks that can go in there and actually do turnarounds oh, and change out equipment and put in new equipment and refine and clean up equipment. Absolutely. So it's that, and then I'll finish with this, and that is whenever there's new technology and new opportunity to put something new in there to help us be more efficient, we need construction companies. Absolutely. We need people that can take their strong health, safety, expertise and ability and come into these facilities and do that work. Ron, I love what you just said. So let me just elaborate on one part. And I've heard you say it quite a few times. So not only do we need construction company, but we need those construction companies that specifically work in industrial construction. Why is that? Well, you know, when we, and this is not a knock on WeBank, it's really actually a there's work to be done and yes. we can all do it together and that is when you go in and look in a database such as WeBank Wait, or, or NMSDC or small business and you put in the word construction you come up with someone that can build a garage or someone that can build a manufacturing facility or a portion of their thereof. Yes. Um, so when we talk as supplier diversity professionals and when suppliers come and approach us and say I'm in construction business and would love to work for, with you we really want to quickly get them to the space of what does construction look like to us and to us it is industrial it is going out in the middle of nowhere and creating something that was not there was nothing there at that time absolutely and it helps us to put in you know uh to put in a facility um so it's really bringing that kind of experience or gaining that type of experience that helps you position yourself better for a deeper conversation with shell and companies like us that's awesome brian so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna end with some statistics that we felt that were very, very important to the community when engaging with major corporations like Shell as it pertains to downstream, okay? okay. So I'm just gonna talk about one thing that was an aha moment for me, and that's the fact that major integrated oil companies only own about 3% of retail stations. Do you know that, Brian? About 3%. A little known fact is that the vast majority of branded stations are owned and operated by independent retailers. By entrepreneurs. By entrepreneurs. There you go. Another connection to WeBank and NMSDC and some of the other spaces that we play. Here, that should right? be an aha moment for, for many of you that are listening and many of the ones that I see that are out here roaming the floor. But Brian, that is phenomenal. I really, really appreciate your time your knowledge, and I appreciate you being a part of this phenomenal supply diversity team at Shell. It's an honor sitting next to you, and it's an honor working with you every day. Oh, same, same. Back at you, Donovan. Thank Thanks. you so much.